The following program, The Lightning Strike, is sponsored by Mohammed Fahim and to the extent applicable their guests. The views and opinions expressed therein do not necessarily reflect those of Newsweb Radio Company or its management. Get ready to be jolted out of the ordinary and into a world where conversations are charged with intensity and facts. The Lightning Strike Talk Radio with your host, Mohammed Fahim, broadcasting live from the heart of the city on Chicago's Progressive Talk Radio, WCPT 820 AM. Welcome to a radio show that charges through the airwaves with an electricity like no other. Here's your host, Mohammed Fahim. Good morning, Chicago, and welcome again to the Lightning Strike with me in the studios today, John Arena. Good morning. And uh, Ken DeLuc will be joining us uh, from location in Frankfurt this morning. And uh, we will be continuing our conversation on what's happening in the world. And uh, the latest good news, our 9-11 moment is what I'm calling it, folks. What happened blew my mind. And uh, we all know where I'm headed with this, right? I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know what you know, nine eleven says bad. Okay, so I'm not sure it's bad. What happened? This well, on uh, your yeah. On 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 that note, uh, <laughs> let's have some applause uh, to begin the day today, Alex. <laughs> Folks, uh, I wanted to carry on this applause for thirty four seconds today. <laughs> well, that's okay. a lot of time. We could be talking about it as opposed to sharing it, but we know what we're talking about. It's thirty four convictions. Oh. Yeah, you, former president that now, deserves more than that. Now, now that you bring up, okay, you know the the right is going nuts on this, folks. The right is just going crazy. Uh, Speaker Mike Johnson mm-hmm. now wants the Supreme Court to step in and uh, reverse what happened. I mean, come on, guys, take it. Okay, that's a victory. According to Trump, that's a victory for him. He is yeah. he's so good at, at taking things and just twisting them around. And uh, the uh, well, because he because he's fundraising off of him. I mean, that's the that's the key here, right? And yep. supposedly they raised thirty four million, uh, which seems like a pretty made up <laughs> number. You know, and, okay. it's, and it isn't the Republican Party independent of his campaign. It's his campaign. So. Yeah, I, I heard 58 million recently. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure it's more, you know, okay. it'll always be more. But, so uh, obviously but truth is not really the issue with this guy. Yeah. Obviously, there are 58 million Americans now who are giving him a dollar each <laughs> off, off of their hard earned money. Of their lotto money. Uh, of the lotto money. Yeah. So. Folks, uh, let's uh, dive deep into it as to what happens now. And uh, John and I are going to be discussing a few things. And uh, I don't know, uh, Ken has been unable to join us, Alex. So I wonder if he's uh, calling in. I don't see him coming up uh, on the screen over here. Ken, good morning. Are you on? Yes, there thank you. Okay. I, I feel like the abandoned stepchild right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, no, your your name didn't pop up on the screen, so Alex is trying to fix it and see if uh, <laughs> right. we can uh, we can get you to to be up on the screen. So if we don't know yeah. who's hey, on, I know we can't so take it. I'm so excited. This is going to be this is going to be a <laughs> great show today. We got so many things going on, and it's just like with what's happened in the uh, world today or this past week with uh, you know things Perfect. that we have going on on the lightning strike. This is going to be amazing. So I'm really excited about what's going to happen today. Okay, so uh, John has a a number of questions and I'm pretty sure you have some questions also and if you guys can start shooting off the questions I'll see if I can answer some of the questions about what happens right. uh, you know what I, yeah. yeah I do I have one that's just like I'm not sure this is the question that's burning in the back of everyone's brain right now and I gotta think if you work for the Secret Service you have to have the best job in the world because you just get to go to one place, sit in a chair, read a book, and never have to worry about anything ever. So would Trump get Secret Service protection if he were given time in prison? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. I don't okay. know if that's the best job because your job <laughs> okay. is basically sitting in a pr- nest to a prison cell <laughs> eight hours, 12 hours a day. I mean, like that seems like 
not the best job, especially okay. for the guy you're well, trying no, to Well, no, but cut. I mean, he puts his, he puts his air, 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 air pads in his ear. He wants to see me on his iPhone. Like, there's a no list thing there, right? And, I, and I, wonder, I wonder, Ken, if they still uh, have those glasses, the dark glasses on while they're sitting in yes. prison. So we can't, we can't see him with his eyes closed like we saw Trump in the, in the courtroom with his eyes yeah. closed the whole time? <laughs> but he wasn't sleeping. He was meditating because he's such a calm well, uh, human being. Well, talking, talking of meditating, uh, the Indian prime minister, <laughs> the Indian elections are almost uh, coming to an end. Uh, I think, yeah, they ended today. And the results are going to be coming out uh, on the 4th. So in a couple of days, we'll know whether Narendra Modi is going to continue to be the prime minister of India for the third time. But it took like 48 hours to go to a place and meditate. Ah, is that right? And uh, oh, I'm telling you guys, uh, the the meditation was so peaceful. You could see him from all angles. So obviously he had some photographers <laughs> over there. <laughs> okay, so the guy is sitting there like a like a Hindu monk. Okay, he's dressed like a monk, and he's got his eyes closed. And uh, believe it or not, so many angles of pictures and video coming off of the meditation. I mean. This guy is a no, joke. He said he's divine. He's, he's delivered yeah. by divine right. Yeah, so he he claimed he claimed. Who else <laughs> says stuff like that? He claimed a couple of weeks yeah, back, guys. Yeah, to go into Buddhism because of that. You know, and yeah. he's fighting So the Indian Prime Minister, folks, believes that he was not born naturally. After his mother passed away, he said, "I suddenly had this uh, epiphany that I was not born biologically. I was sent by God." So we have megalomaniacs wow. like this trying to run the biggest democracy in the world. And hopefully uh, June 4th, we will see some change. In, uh, but every uh, exit poll that is coming out of India is saying that uh, the prime minister of India will have a third term in office. I don't know if those exit terms uh, polls are being manipulated, but uh, let's go back to yeah, our our, own, our, problems to our own problems over here in the country, or no, our own challenges. I, I, I don't know what to say, man. Challenges, problems of our, our I, I, own. I mean, you know, I think. Hey, this... Alex, please, can I have that applause again? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, uh, Thirty-four counts, folks. The first time in history of thirty-four counts. And, thirty-four you know, and counts. And only that's thirty-four counts, and only sixty to go. Oh yeah, ninety-four total counts against them. Three <laughs> okay. more trials. So um, we got Ron from Michigan. Our buddy calling in. Ron, good morning, man. You're having a nice day. I hope. Yeah, well, it's a little uh, rainy, cl cloudy, but it's always a beautiful day in here in Michigan. We need that rain for the uh, blueberries and strawberries. Okay. But, uh, you know, I live out here in the middle of these uh, Trump supporters. Okay, uh -huh. Michigan has always been a Ku Klux Klan stronghold. I don't care if you're from Kalamazoo or Benton Harbor or uh, Berrien Springs. You know, it was called... Uh, it, uh, no blacks were allowed on the streets after dark. Okay, that was enforced. Okay. All right? Sunset laws. And yeah. uh, I beg your pardon. Uh, sun, they call them sunset laws. The sunset laws. Yeah. yeah. Sunset laws. They exactly. Were... My wife's father went to a seminary school here, and that was the rule that you know he he told me that uh, rule they had, and I, I I found it not too hard to believe, you know. And then I I found a contemporary of his at the YMCA, and he confirmed that. Mm -hmm. And but. You know, I live in. A, I don't see the support. I don't see the you know the flags on the back of the trucks. There, there's a few uh, mm. Trump supporters. You know, I can go in a 30 mile radius and and, and point them out. But they're scared because <clears throat> they know the government and that government's job is to infiltrate these organizations that that are against our government. Just like they infiltrated the Michigan plotters to kidnap Governor Gretchen. Mm -hmm. It's their job being on top, and they know that if they rise up again, the government will come and get them, take their guns, take their Bibles. Because Joe Biden, he has the power to do it. He's not President Obama. He, because Obama did not have that power because he did not have the uh, his his black. Uh, it did not allow him because he's already tarnished mm -hmm. by the racists here. But Joe Biden doesn't care. He's going to go after these people, okay? We, we saw Dark Brandon come out. You know, I don't care what you say. Dark Brandon <laughs> came after Trump, and he's going to keep coming after him, plain and simple. We have to. But, uh, you know, maybe, the, yeah, a lot, but the only people who are pumping this up is Fox, 
Fox so-called news, plain and simple. They're the ones that are trying to rev this whole thing up. Yep. But I really don't don't see the. Yeah, his people are, are out there supporting him, but I don't see the, the vicious. They're not going to. You're going to have maybe some lone wolves, maybe, but they're not going to cut. That's a lot of doodly squat talk, in my opinion. And <laughs> well, I uh, Ron, uh, Ron, thank you so much for calling in. And uh, folks, we will continue the conversation. If you want to join the conversation, the number to call in is seven seven three seven six three nine two seven eight. You're tuned in to the light. Strike. I'm your host, Mohammed Fahim. With me in the studio is John Arena and uh, Ken calling in from location. So, Ken, to continue the, the conversation, let's start off with the, with the questions that we had uh, some of the listeners uh, send in. And we'll start with question number one. All right. My question, actually, I don't know if it's number one or not. No, What's no. Let's let's go. Let's go. Well, let's go in sequence, Ken. Well, let's, let's go in sequence oh, because really? you okay, you're baby. jumping the gun, man. Okay, John, you want to go with uh, number one? Uh, are felons right. barred from from uh, what are felons barred from doing? Uh, okay, so uh, it varies by state, folks. Uh, in New York, where Trump was convicted, uh, there are some collateral consequences of being convicted of a felony. So more, uh, most importantly, felons in New York cannot hold many public offices, including elected positions. But Trump is no longer a, a New York resident, right? So in Florida, where Trump is a resident, felons lose their civil rights, including the ability to hold public office and serve on a jury. I don't so, think I'd want him on my jury. <laughs> so while he can't hold office in Florida or New York, there is nothing in the Constitution Listen to this, folks. There's nothing in the Constitution to bar him from running for president. No. But here's this is important because the Constitution really doesn't say any elected official can or can't based on the, the felon. It's the laws of the country. So Congress has passed laws. You can't be a felon in, in, yep. in Congress, in the Senate, in the House. You can't serve on city council. That's because there are laws in yep. municipal code that say that. The problem is there's no law that's ever been created by Congress to say the president can't be a convicted felon. Because nobody assumed that we would have would, a yeah. president like who, this who have thought, bozo, man. Who would have thought the voters would, <laughs> okay. would put him in office in the first place? But now, yeah. and, and, we, and, it, and that's not, that die hasn't been cast. We've got November. That's when this gets adjudicated in terms of what does the American people think about somebody Absolutely. who has 34 counts. And, and that's, this is the felony counts. Yep. He has civil convictions for sexual assault and rape. So this is more than just you know, yeah. what we see here. And obviously the documents case and, and t asking for 11,000 votes. You know, to commit yeah. election find, fraud. Find, find those votes for me, right? Yeah. Okay, so question number two that our listeners sent in is, uh, and uh, drum roll, please, what's the question number two? Can Trump get his rights back? Okay, can, uh, can Trump get his rights back? So in New York, a felon can apply for a certificate of good conduct uh, to restore all rights after a certain period of time. It's usually about three years or so. Uh, the charges against uh, Trump are Class E felonies, which are kind of like the uh, you know, the lowest felony. But Florida requires felons to apply for clemency through a special board. But in the case of out-of-state convictions like Trump's, it defers to the state where the person was convicted. Yeah. So and New Trump York has law, already put his foot in it because he was supposed to meet with his uh, parole officer and, and <laughs> set up that whole thing. He immediately violated that that rule. So he's not only has 10... 10 uh, um, violations of the gag order against them. Now yeah. he's already not followed process as a convicted felon. So here we go. I, I'm not sure the certificate of good conduct is sitting on a desk waiting to be signed anywhere. So folks, uh, we're having hey, a lot hey, of fun Mohammed? today. Yes, Ken. Mohammed, if uh, re-elected, could Trump pardon himself? <laughs> okay. Well, not in this case. See, presidents have the power to issue pardons for federal offenses. Trump has been convicted of a felony in New York state court. So that would require the pardon of New York's governor, Democrat, Kathy Hochul, who has praised his conviction. So I don't think there's a, there's a, there's a chance there. Okay. Well, because you just don't overturn convictions, you know, that are <laughs> okay. valid, uh, unless you're in Texas. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, uh, oh, yeah. We don't want to get off on a tangent. We, we don't want to get on that uh, <laughs> tangent. So another question that came in is, uh, can Trump still vote? So most likely, 
Trump is a Florida resident and Florida defers to New York law on the question of felons voting. New York allows felons to vote as long as they are not incarcerated. Uh, John, what, what, is the, uh, what does the law say in, in Illinois for that, for felons voting? I honestly don't know. You okay. caught me off. Caught well, me off yeah, if, they, if they are not incarcerated, yes, they can. Okay, in Illinois. Okay, okay. Yep, that's my understanding. Okay. That's good to know. So, another question coming up. What is the next one? Well, will he get prison time? Because that would be incarcerated. <laughs> right? That's, that's the next obvious on, on On that note, can we have some applause, please? <laughs> okay. <laughs> For, <laughs> in support of prison time, is what you're saying? <laughs> okay. So, here's uh, the thing, uh, well, let, let, me, let, let me, like, uh, pipe in here a little bit. Under normal circumstances, there's no way in hell he would get prison time. But because he has been so blatantly, um, you know, going in the face of this court, I'm not saying this is out of the realm of possibility. It could actually happen, whether it be 30 days or 34 days, one day for each count. Who knows? Well, here's but the here's the thing, Ken. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, you know, uh, the the fixer in this case. Uh, was sentenced for three years. Remember? Mm -hmm. Trump's uh, fixer. So Trump's sentencing but that was lying to Congress. Yeah. Yeah. So a little different, you know. But it was related still. to this. But you know, you yeah. can't but trust was... him because he's a liar. I mean, really? <laughs> yeah. but, and he's but, a liar. But we can trust Trump because, oh, wait, yeah. he's a liar, too. I, that's documented. <laughs> so uh, here's the uh, answer to the question, folks. His sentencing is set for July uh, 11th now, four days before the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. Now, Judge Juan Mercan could technically impose prison term. Felony falsifying business records can be pub uh, punished with up to four years in prison, not three years. I take it back. Mm -hmm. But Trump has been convicted of Class E felonies, the lowest level in New York law. He's also a first-time offender. You know, come on, he's a first-time offender. First-time convicted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of... Uh, yeah. Yeah, here's, here's, first-time convicted, not a first-time offender. Yeah. Thank you, John. Here, here's an interesting thing. I think in terms of like taking a, a higher-level view of this, they really they didn't challenge the jury pool. They they constantly say they couldn't get a fair, like this grievance that they do, and and what they're doing is immediately fundraising off of this. Yeah. In his base, these are badges of honor. That's the sad truth oh, of where boy. we are right now. So I think he is he is going to do everything he can to get jail time because in his mind that elevates him and his base. And at the end of the day, whether he wins the presidency or not, in his mind it's get me money because that allows me to continue to do the grift that he does yep. whether he wins or not if the vote doesn't, doesn't go matter. his way he'll say it was rigged he's yep. saying everything's rigged now so it, 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 this is a political strategy not a legal strategy oh, boy if he goes to prison he will claim to be a nelson mandela now when it exactly. comes out right yeah. oh you know That's i was in prison i'm another gandhi i'm mandela <laughs> yeah the number okay. i'm okay you know it's, <laughs> Folks, it's we are living in dystopian times now, okay? If uh, if Trump is elected president and the judge asked for prison times, could he be jailed while in office? How would that work, John? Well, I don't know how that would work, because I don't think we have a, a, a roadmap on how do you govern a country from a jail cell. <laughs> you phone it in? <laughs> I'm okay. not exactly sure. <laughs> so uh, We're going to have to write that. As we go, I think. I guess so, yeah. No one really knows exactly, right? So time in prison uh, still seems relatively unlikely for this offense. One can imagine the U.S. Supreme Court getting involved because our friend Mike Johnson now, the speaker, has been jumping up and down in his uh, platform shoes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so asking the Supreme Court to, to step in. But, but it's a state, uh, but it's a state charge. And, and this is, would be very yeah. atypical for the Supreme Court to weigh in on a case like this it's it's at, like you said it's a class e felony so yeah. it's not even something that it's just because the control of the supreme court by the radical right they might actually do it but it would be up to them the supreme court could weigh in it would be incredibly atypical and i think it would have huge repercussions for people's perception of uh, yep. the role of the court so folks uh, we are having fun today and uh, we started off with the uh, with a slightly uh, truncated version of applause. We didn't want to play 34 seconds of applause. But, man, 
We're going, we're going to play 34 times during the broadcast today. <laughs> Alex, could I have some applause, please? Some applause for 34. <laughs> so, so let me just offer something on the whole prison time thing, and this is the, this is the other side of the okay. equation here. You know, the idea that we're talking about prison time for a potential president, not just a candidate, right? And let's hope that, again, I, I beg the voters to get out there and do the right thing here. Please. But it's important, a historical note, that did you know that Hitler went to prison for staging a coup before, for five years he was in prison for staging a coup, and that was before he ultimately became the supreme leader of the Third Reich. Wow. So, like, that, we that have is, to, That's great that you brought that up. That's, to, like, amazing. That's, yeah. like, really important. We have to look at history that. and see what people have done before, what rational people supposedly yeah. have done, because charismatic <laughs> leaders... Mm -hmm. have ways of defeating intellect. And this is what Trump does. He rambles on. He, he throws out lies. It's impossible to fact check in real time. And he plays the victim. And unfortunately, we have a population in this country of 30, 25, you know, 30 percent think, that can't I, see I, past I, that. I think that fox fur on his head has something to do with it. <laughs> it's, a, it's burrowing in. <laughs> okay. You so, know what, John? I am so much looking forward to this debate coming up. Oh, because yeah. Because... I mean, literally, this is going to, like, hopefully, especially in light of the uh, past uh, events so, that happened. Hey, hey week, Ken. This uh, could be like a game changer, really. Yeah. To get people out of their fog and seeing what actual reality is like. Yeah. Ken, Ken do, you, do you think they're going to put some kind of an ankle monitor on, on Trump? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, they're, I think they'll be built into the Trump gym shoes. So just have ankle monitors built <laughs> into his gym yeah. shoes. Okay. Okay. Golden <laughs> shoe. His, his golden shoes. Yes, folks. So uh, if you want to join the conversation, feel free to call in 773-763-9278 is the number. Let me repeat that. Seven. Oh, and by the way, folks, I don't, want, I don't mean to sound biased at all. If you have ideas that are on the other side of the aisle, please share oh, with us please, your please ideas. Please do share. We to you. Yeah, we'd, we'd we love to have. Uh, yeah, we'd love to have some Republicans calling in. Uh, we just want to see whether you guys even listen to the other side to get some of that muck out of your brain or not, mm -hmm. folks. Okay. So, uh, Roosevelt, uh, thank you for uh, for calling in. It's been a while, my friend. Where have you been? You haven't been calling in. You don't like us anymore? Hey, hey Mohammed, I listen to your show all the time. I just, uh, the time I call, uh, you guys run out of time. Yeah, <laughs> okay. The program is so short. First of all, guys, I want to get, what would you just finish saying, Mohammed? totally disagree with you oh, there is course. no republican party there yeah. is no republican party it's a yeah. cult let's call it what it is okay. there is no other side muhammad there's only <laughs> one side the okay. side is the side of democracy okay yep. but i want what i called what i called was the people that support him the people that are still going to go vote for him don't they see that his own family doesn't totally support him his wife has never been alongside of him, has never set foot inside of a courtroom. Remember, there's three three uh, decisions that were made, all of them in New York. The first one was E. Jean Carroll when she got $5 million for uh, mm -hmm. the sexual uh, yep. mm -hmm. encounter. The second one was E. Jean Carroll, $83 million for defaming her name. Yep. yep. Okay, so, and then this is the latest one. I know the other two were civil, but if you think about it, the score is 36 to nothing, to zero, because there's been 12, 12, 12 jurors that have uh, said that he's guilty on all three cases. Hey, he, fi he, finally, he finally got the popular vote on that, Roosevelt. Come on. Right. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. Okay. So, guys, and then I wanted to... You know, what what I kind just of funny. Said. He was looking for 1,148 votes in Georgia. Well, he accomplished something. He got 12 votes in New York. Yeah, he's down 12 <laughs> votes from the. So he yeah. just find a, another 11,000. Okay. Change. So, hey, folks, uh, guys, again, if you want guys, to call in and join the conversation, seven seven three seven six three nine two seven eight. Roosevelt, thank you so much for calling in, and thank you thank so you much guys. for listening in. And uh, we have got uh, one more caller that we will take on in just a minute. We'll take a quick break and we'll be back on the other side with Dave from Hoffman Estates.
Did you know there's an Illinois mandate that states by 2025, ComEd has to have 25% of the energy they deliver come from a green source? Because of this, plus the fees and taxes you've already paid on this program, if you qualify, you can get solar on your home at no out-of-pocket cost. This can mean an average savings on your electric bill of maybe 30 to 50%. More importantly, it would eliminate the uncertainty of ComEd raising your rates by whoever knows how much each year. Some people have noticed a 41% increase on their bill this spring, and ComEd has been asking for another 80% increase over the next four years. If your average bill is 200 bucks a month now, maybe it could be reduced to 100 bucks a month. Now, five years, would you rather pay 115 or possibly four to 500? If you'd like to see if you can qualify for this program, call Ken Luk at 312-617-8979. That's 312-617-8979. Help us save the environment and change that electric bill burden. That's 312-617-8979. Take advantage of this program while it's still available. Are you a business looking for the right talent or a job seeker searching for your dream career? Look no further than the Center for Strategic Solutions, your workforce solution experts. Our experienced team at the Center for Strategic Solutions is dedicated to connecting employers with top-tier talent and helping job seekers find opportunities that truly align with their goals. We're more than just consultants. We're your partners in success. Ready to take your workforce to the next level or land that ideal job? Contact the Center for Strategic Solutions today at 1-847-306-9274 or visit us online at www.cfssus.com. The Center for Strategic Solutions, your bridge to a brighter future in the Windy City. The number to call is 847-306-9274 or send an email to info at cfssus.com. That is info at cfssus.com. Welcome back to the Lightning Strike with Mohammed Fahim. Okay, folks, so welcome back to the Lightning Strike. Uh, joining us also is uh, Bill Shepard, our director of music and all kinds of things that are happening in Chicago. Bill, good morning. Hey, good morning, Muhammad. How are you? <laughs> Bill, I'm having the best day of my life today. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm having fun. You don't want me to stir the pot, though, so I'll just keep it the music. <laughs> okay. Hey, I, I want to say something about Bill. He's just done something amazing. Gal, who sent me a poem, which was not meant to be a lyric, she sent me this poem, okay? And on this poem, it wasn't like uh, roses are red, violets are blue type of rhyming scheme. It was just like a really cool poem. And I gave it to Bill. I said, Bill, can you make something out of this? And he turned it into a song, which he's going to share with us in a very short while. And we're going to take this concept and really put it out there. So anybody who either writes poetry or lyrics, and anybody who is a composer who has music, but like Elton John, couldn't put a lyric to a song to save their lives, we're going to put something together right now. And this is what we're going to play is the iteration of uh, Joshlyn. Yazi, who sent in this poem, and Bill, who put music to it. This is the first concept of what we're trying to do. So we want to be there that's Tinder versus the voice. We want to bring a program out here for everybody, and Bill's going to be the head guy in charge of this stuff. So, so Bill, folks, uh, uh, Ken, uh, so thank, you, uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, so before we go to uh, Dave in Hoffman Estates and uh, Stephanie in, in Kankakee, thank you uh, guys uh, for calling in. Uh, so please stay on the line. Uh, Alex, if you could just uh, play that, uh, that musical thing that, uh, that Bill created now. This is the concept, folks. If you write poetry, send it in. Bill will put it to music. That gives you a flavor of what this segment is going to be again. And if you have got anything that you write, please send it to Bill, Bill at TLSChicago.com for the lightning strike. 
And you can mark a copy to Ken, Ken at TLSChicago.com. On that note, uh, let's uh, go back to the phone lines. And uh, Dave, good morning. Call, and thank you for calling in from Hoffman Estates, my friend. And you've been a, a loyal listener. So what you're going to do is uh, we're going to give you we're going to give you some glue that you can send uh, to Trump so that uh, when he goes to prison, he stays there. Okay, so what do you have to say on that, my friend? I don't, seriously, I don't believe he will even be a day in jail. I mean, he won't even get the supermax like Blasio. You know, <laughs> okay. you know, he'll probably they'll put him probably in Trump Tower with a bracelet on his ankle at best. But uh, what I've been uh, mentioning when you're talking about the... And she got elected in that again or whatever. There's nothing in the thing that's saying I've heard that he can get appointed. You know, we got what, the 22nd Amendment that he can only serve two terms as elected. But I've heard something, I don't know how factual it is now, but they claim there's no nothing in the Constitution about appointed. Huh. Appointed, appointed to be president? president. Yeah, if, yeah, if you're no. appointed as a president, you can't be appointed as a president. Why not? If well, you if 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 you are the dictator no and you come you you come up with that law, well, I mean, okay. yeah, if he gets in, the, the whole the whole I, the book I, I, is I'm thrown not out. sure, but that's what I heard on like Hartman show, or whatever this guy. And <laughs> okay. you might know more, and we're in uncharted waters here with this boy every day. And uh, well, there'd be a fight against that. The other one. So we ain't talking about. You think Hunter Biden's gonna get a a fair judge? <laughs> <laughs> okay, he'll get a fair judge just like you know, Trump got a fair like judge. Captain, right? <laughs> I'm telling you guys, uh, we, again, we're living oh. in dystopian times, folks. So, uh, Dave, thank you so much for listening in. Thank you so much for calling in. And let's uh, uh, go to Stephanie from Kankakee. And uh, Stephanie, good morning. Thank you for tuning in to the Lightning Strike. Good morning. I want to say that Trump's got to make money. Right now, mm -hmm. Trump owes about a million and a half. No, 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 no. He he owes much more than a million, man. A million What's is nothing. In Chicago. In Chicago. Well, okay. well, he said that he double dipped on the taxes on Trump Tower here. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 For yep. Yep. Five hundred thousand dollars twice. Thank you so for bringing that up. Trump. Thank you for bringing yeah. that up. Now he's got another grift going on. Now, why did you remind him of that, Stephanie? He's, he's listening well, into the show now. Owes, he owes the city of Chicago 500000 and rising because he lied about how much water he's taking out of the Chicago River. Yeah, to, 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 and, cool and down, uh, to cool down his, uh, his Trump Tower, right? I remember that thing. And just a little reminder, yeah. you know who was his attorney on those? That was... Uh, our other convicted friend, Ed Burke, all former alderman Ed Burke. So okay. he runs in uh, he runs in a very tight circle. Hey, John, of kind of John, but but as we speak, those those are rising. Ken, Ken, hang on one second. Let uh, let let Stephanie finish her statement, and then uh, what I'm saying is, these fees and fines are rising. Mm -hmm. So by the time he gets out, he may owe another. Two or three million. <laughs> okay. Hey, so let's yeah, remind it, people that he's still grifting, even as he's yeah, Stephanie, of grifting. Stephanie, he hasn't paid any bills to anybody so far. I really feel for that schmuck of a lawyer who represented Trump now that yeah. he's... I don't, I don't know. Do you guys think that mm -hmm. that lawyer is going to get paid? Well, he said... Um, I'm, can I'm take a fly? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, his lawyer Todd uh, yeah. said that he was going to get paid, and he was, was sure of it. But uh, <laughs> okay. the track record from the Trump uh, writing, Trump only writes checks to a very limited number of people, and yeah. that is mostly the porn stars he sleeps with or other people he can commit uh, adultery alleged, with. Al allegedly, because Trump claims that he never slept with uh, you know with well, Stormy Daniels. I, I wouldn't put it. Allegedly, he didn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, they only take 30 seconds. I mean, really? <laughs> okay. Well, he goes to sleep in the in the courtroom, folks. So here yeah. is the thing. Right. Okay, we are having right. too much fun so wait, over wait, here. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, before I forget this, I want to ask John because he is a alder or was an alderman for the city of Chicago for many years, and I never understood this. And maybe you have a background. You 
you can help explain it to me. I've been in city politics for most of my life. How is it that there's a city rule you can have you cannot have your name on the side of a building in downtown Chicago yet Trump got that passed. How did that happen? Do you have a clue on that? If you don't, that's fine. I just yeah. was wondering how that worked. So so that had that had been approved uh before I got sworn in in 2011, there was a there was a loophole and a change in the law, and he snuck that in. That got that sign got snuck in uh, before the law changed about the size of signs and placement. So that was actually the city tried to fight that. Uh, the legal department, uh, Brendan Riley is the alderman uh, in mm-hmm. that area, and he did try to fight getting that sign up because that was while the building was under construction. But uh, they did sneak that in. So if a law exists and you apply within, you know, within that framework and a new law comes into effect, the new law can't negate the previous well, ho- law. Well, hopefully, hopefully, Ken, the new owners of that building will change the name of that building. Like they changed the Sears Tower, man, to Willis Tower, right? Yeah. So uh, keep your fingers crossed. But uh, let us continue with some of the questions. We are running uh, very close to short on time today, folks. It's been a wonderful day, okay? Would you be my neighbor? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so <laughs> you're, you're tuned in to the Lightning Strike. So every Sunday we are here. And you can catch the show on Facebook Live. And you can also go to our page on Facebook at uh, slash TLS Chicago. Uh, you can also go to our website which is uh, tlschicago.com for the lightning strike. And uh, while you're on the website, uh, check out our uh, little, uh, there's a link over there to make a donation to the show. And if you can send something in to help us pay the bills over here, that would be very much appreciated. So Every uh, $34 helps. <laughs> I think that I think, it's a number I, of the show. I, I think that would, that would be something, man. <laughs> okay. Hey, Ken. We need $34 donations from everybody who's listening in, man. <laughs> okay. Hey, I'll tell you what. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up. And I'm going to go back with Bill here. This is important for you uh, uh, songwriters out there who make music and couldn't write lyrics. And for you people who are in poetry or lyrics, you send this. And what we're going to do, you heard like a little sample of what we just did right now. Every week, we're going to take... The, uh, we're going to have one songwriter or lyricist, and we'll give them to a bunch of people, and they'll come up with stuff, and everyone can vote on this. Whoever wins for that week, we're going to make an album out of it. So we'll like to have 12 songs, 12 weeks. We'll make an album, and then we'll sell that album and then put it out there so you can actually make money and be immortalized for your talent if you take advantage of this program. So, again, Bill at... TLSChicago.com. If you have lyrics, put in this line lyrics and then give the lyrics. If you say need lyrics, put in the line your name and your email address and phone number. We'll put this stuff together and we'll make this work for you. And, you know, like this will be fun. I mean, it'll be really cool. And I actually have some connections. Maybe we can make this uh, well, a video uh, thing. Well, thank you, uh, Ken, and thank you, Bill. Okay, we've got about 15 more minutes left for the show, folks. Our person of the week is going to be Pastor Lawrence Blackpool Jr. And we will play uh, uh, him as, as we come closer to that segment. We'll have uh, Pastor Blackpool and, and Sheila Sheila White, our segment producer, calling in on, on that. And again, if you want to be featured as a person of the week or if you want to join as a guest on the show, go to our website, tlschicago.com, tlschicago.com, and send in a request, and we'll be happy to see if we can bring you on as a guest on the show on a, an upcoming Sunday. So uh, going back to the questions uh, for the next uh, f- uh, five minutes, uh, John, if you can continue with uh, the questions that were sent in. Uh, I think we're at, uh, has anyone gone to prison for f- a felony falsifying business records in New York? Yes. So a survey of the past uh, cases, by this is a legal website called Just Security. So if you go there, uh, there are numerous examples of prison time being imposed for this offense. Now, these types of convictions do not usually lead to jail time. We have to keep that in mind, okay? So the next question that had come in was, uh, can Trump travel abroad? Now, Trump's conviction, folks, does not automatically prevent him from holding a U.S. passport. 
but it could make it difficult to travel to some countries now, including Canada, Mexico, as well as Australia, China, and South Africa. I think he will be more than welcome in Russia. Yeah, Russia's <laughs> wide open. The doors are open. <laughs> okay. Although Putin doesn't like a lot of competition from other tyrants, so oh, you know, yeah. it might be it might be a nice little like marriage, but then after the honeymoon period, I think things might get shaky. Hey, not North Korea is always there. Uh, that's true. Yes, <laughs> okay. and and Rocket Man loves him. Rocket Man loves him, right? So, so folks, uh, last question on that because there's so many questions and we are running out of time. Can Trump possess a firearm? I don't know why he would need a firearm, right? Because yeah, he's surrounded by guns, he's so surrounded that's by really security a, officers. Uh, an issue. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, in a federal law. Bars individuals convicted of a felony from possessing a firearm, and most states have analogous uh, prohibitions now. So, the New York convicted felons cannot obtain a permit to possess a firearm. It's possible for Trump to later petition a state judge to have his far to you know to have his firearm possession rights restored. But man. Who needs a firearm when you can fart at will? I mean, the guy has been farting in pre- sitting in court, and all Trump has to do is to just turn around, and anybody who is after Trump will run away, folks. Okay. So uh, we will uh, take a quick break and uh, just play one commercial, and we'll be back with our person of the week, uh, Sheila White, uh, calling in with Pastor Lawrence uh, Blackfull Jr. Did you know there's an Illinois mandate that states by 2025, ComEd has to have 25% of the energy they deliver come from a green source? Because of this, plus the fees and taxes you've already paid on this program, if you qualify, you can get solar on your home at no out-of-pocket cost. This can mean an average savings on your electric bill of maybe 30 to 50%. More importantly, it would eliminate the uncertainty of ComEd raising your rates by whoever knows how much each year. Some people have noticed a 41% increase on their bill this spring, and ComEd has been asking for another 80% increase over the next four years. If your average bill is 200 bucks a month now, maybe it could be reduced to 100 bucks a month. Now, five years, would you rather pay 115 or possibly four to 500? If you'd like to see if you can qualify for this program, call Ken DeLuc at 312-617-8979. That's 312-617-8979. Help us save the environment and change that electric bill burden. That's 312-617-8979. Take advantage of this program while it's still available. Welcome back to the Lightning Strike with Mohammed Fahim. Good morning, folks. Uh, welcome back to the Lightning Strike, and good morning. Uh, welcome, uh, Sheila. Thank you so much for bringing in Pastor Lawrence Blackfull. And, folks, here is Sheila White. She is our segment producer for our Person of the Week. Good morning, Sheila. Do we got her? No, she's not on. Okay, so uh, hang on one second. Uh, let's uh, go back uh, to commercial time, and uh, we'll be back with uh, with Sheila and Pastor Lawrence Blackpool in just a couple of seconds. Are you a business looking for the right talent or a job seeker searching for your dream career? Look no further than the Center for Strategic Solutions, your workforce solution experts. Our experienced team at the Center for Strategic Solutions is dedicated to connecting employers with top-tier talent and helping job seekers find opportunities that truly align with their goals. We're more than just consultants. Hello, Mohammed and team. Our person of the week is Pastor Lawrence Blackfell. He is the pastor of Bethel Baptist Church, which is located in Chicago Heights, Illinois. Bethel is transforming lives through their teaching, through their preaching, and living the gospel. Welcome, Pastor, to the show this morning. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Pastor, let's talk a little bit about how your organization is addressing the distressed and social economic issues in the community. You help so many people. There's so many things that you do within the community. Let's talk about that a little bit. Well, um, we get a chance to serve our Bethel Church Baptist Church is in the city of Chicago Heights, which is in the far south suburbs of uh, the Chicagoland area. 
And our Bethel Family Resource Center, also in Chicago Heights, is directly across the street. And Chicago Heights, along with many other communities in the Southland, um, have been underserved for many years. And as a result, find these communities find themselves uh, in a distressed condition or severely mm. distressed condition because of blight um the lack of commercial and retail development to um help carry the um tax uh load and so oftentimes families or homeowners are left with the burden of carrying a very high uh having to bear the weight of a very high tax rate or or tax burden because of the lack of these other resources. And then as a result, many families have lost their properties to mm -hmm. foreclosure because oftentimes their property taxes exceed their mortgage amount. Mm -hmm. And so you have a lot of blight, vacant buildings, and now a lot of properties being torn down and just vacant lots. And so our goal is to help transform communities like this by bringing um, affordable housing along with commercial and retail development as well. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that because you all are transforming not only lives, but you're transforming the communities, which brings me to Bethel Resource Center. Let's talk a little bit about some of the programs that are offered at the at the Resource Center. Again, thanks for asking that question. Um, the Bethel Family Resource Center has been around since 1978. Um, wow. It was established by Pastor John Rice Sr., my, my pastor, and um, as a, a young person, I actually started um, my work career at Bethel <laughs> Family Resource Center with one of my first summer jobs back in 1988. And it was moving cinder block to build some of the rooms. That being said, we continue doing workforce development to this day. That is the core of what we do at Bethel Family Resource Center is providing workforce development training in various skill sets and opportunities. And so right now we we are focused on the construction trades. And so we have two pre-apprenticeship programs that we offer, one for youth and one for adults um, that uh, provide them training in carpentry, plumbing, electrical, drywall, um, you name it, in the um, as well as HVAC. Mm -hmm. And so when they complete our program, they get their NCCER certification, which is recognized by the unions and the uh, construction industry nationwide. Wow. You know, and, and I... I know that you have a strong a passion for youth and young people. You started out yes. you saying moving cinder blocks in the resource center. <laughs> and I know you have a basketball uh, facility. You have a gym on your on your um at your yes. location where you have the young people be able to come and, and play basketball. But there's another event that's coming up, a golf tournament. Tell us a little bit about the golf tournament, where it's going to be and, and what's happening with that. Yes. So um, we for. This will be our second annual um, golf outing and fundraiser. This will be held uh, on June 28th at the Green Garden Country Club in Frankfort, Illinois. Uh, it will be on Friday, June 28th with a one o'clock shotgun start. And um, we are excited about that. Again, this is our second annual uh, golf outing. And we had a great time last year in Crete at the Lincoln Oaks uh, Golf Course. And this year we will be at Green Gardens Country Club, and which is a beautiful facility. They have done, uh, uh, they have renovated and modernized their clubhouse. And so there's so many different things that'll be uh, people will be able to do, even for those who don't golf. There will mm -hmm. be opportunities, games and and networking opportunities for anyone who wants to be a part of our golf outing this year. 
It's so awesome. Thank you so much for being our person of the week, our organization of the week, Bethel Baptist Church, located in Chicago Heights, Illinois. I want you to remember that, Mohammed, June 28th, Green Garden Country Club in Frankfurt. And Ken, I know that you're out there in Frankfurt, so we want you guys to bring your golf clubs and have a good time. Back to you, Mohammed. Well, uh, Sheila, thank you so much. Uh, again, uh, Pastor Lawrence Blackpool Jr. has been our person of the week. He's also been part of our show for since the beginning of the show. And uh, folks, do check him out and check out what's happening with uh, Pastor Lance Blackfull. We've got uh, four minutes to go, and this is our 34th round of applause for each one of those counts. Oh, God. <laughs> the crowd is the crowd is hey, and By the way, uh, I, I, I got to admit that uh, Lawrence is one of the most amazing people I've ever met. And please attend this uh, outing. Uh, Mike Zay, they brought him in from Ohio to rehab the Green Garden Golf Course. He did an amazing job. It'll be a great event, and I'll be there. And unfortunately, I might have a beer or two. So if you want to play me for money, you'll probably win. So I'm <laughs> okay. And, uh, folks, uh, the program that Pastor Blackfull was talking about, about revitalizing the community, uh, I've been part of that uh, process with him for the last almost 10, 12 years now with some of the workforce and economic development activities that uh, that I get involved in. And I've been on the ground floor to see the kind of difference that Pastor Blackfull is making for the community in uh, Chicago Heights over there. So if you want to be featured as a guest on the show, Please go to our website, tlschicago.com, send in a request, and uh, we would love to feature people who are making a difference in the community. So the show is not just about politics and holding our uh, accounted, uh, you know, our elected leaders accountable. It's also about recognizing people who are doing a good job and giving back to the communities that we live in. Uh, we are going to wind up, uh, wind off, I guess. How do you see that? Wind up, wind off? Uh, I don't know if it's wind off, but yeah, you know, okay. wind up the show. We are going to with... wind up the show with a reminder that our tail, which keeps on wagging the American dog, by that I mean Netanyahu, came out very strongly against Biden's proposal to end the war yesterday. And uh, then I believe that someone yanked his chain and uh, kind of... Uh, Took him back a, a step, so about half an hour back, the Israeli uh, government has released a statement that they are willing to listen and to abide by the proposal that President Biden has made to end this continuing massacre. It's not a war, folks. A war is between two equal opponents. This was a massacre, pure and simple. And hopefully, President Biden will put his foot down on the neck of Netanyahu and hold him and hold his nose to the ground on this one. It's been, it's been horrible. It's been horrible now. This is not a war, folks. And we see the Israeli people rising up. There's a big protest and yep. calling for the release of the hostages and to end this because they see the uh, violence that's been inflicted in their name. Absolutely. So most of the people in Israel are against this war also, or this massacre. And hopefully the American people will support the decision of the Biden administration now to hold uh, the Israelis accountable for this. And on that note, you are welcome to have a wonderful week, the rest of this week. And we'll be seeing you folks again on next Sunday, bright and early, 9 a.m. on WCPT, Chicago's progressive talk radio stations, uh, where facts matter. And anything that we talk about, folks, we do our research. We just don't come in and uh, start uh, mouthing off like some of the people on the right do. They right? kind of do that a lot. Don't they? <laughs> they kind of do a lot just of that. Making stuff up. <laughs> okay. On that note, thank you so much for listening in. We'll be seeing you again next Sunday.